In 2024, the Olympic Games will take place here in France. But who are actually the real heroes of the Olympic Games? Although the Games are still a few years away, everyone is already pretty busy with the organization of this event. And is it actually ecologically responsible to organize such an event as this? This and so much more. I'm ready, my guests are ready. Coffee not yet, but anyway, welcome to ESCPA News. Hello everyone, bonjour à tous, vitaïche. Welcome to this talk show made by Polish, French and Belgium students who are playing correspondence in Paris. The summer of 1924, nearly 100 years ago. It's been that long since the Olympic Games took place here in Paris. Bastian, it's not the first time that Parisians organize such an event as this. No, not at all. Actually, it's the third time the Olympics are being hosted in Paris. The first time was in 1900. Um, it were the second modern Olympics. The first were held in Athens in 1896. Um, they were organized by the International Olympic Committee, uh, which was created by French aristocrat Pierre de Coubertin. Um, but as you said, what might be even more interesting is that when the Olympics will be held here in 2024, it will have been exactly 100 years after the previous ones in 1924. Okay, and how has the organization been changed throughout the years? Well, um, when you compare the, the ones from 1924 to the ones that will be happening in two years, um, the, the, there are of course many differences, but the biggest one might be the scale of it all. Uh, because for example, in 1924 there were 3,088 participants, while in 2024 um, there will be an estimated of 10,500 participants. So that's quite a lot more. Um, another example is the events. A uh, hundred years ago there were only 126 events. Now there should be 329. Also a lot more. Okay, so I assume such a or large organization costs a lot of money. Uh, where does the money come from? How many money will Paris and um, the French government spend? Well, actually, 97% uh, of the money comes from the private sector. Um, it is an estimated of uh, 8.3 billion euros, but um, that's how much they think it will be now, but probably it will even exceed that number. Um, most of the money comes from partner companies like um, yeah, companies that invest in the Olympics or uh, ticket offices and licensing um, advertisements, you know, the, the logo. Um, and that money covers actually almost everything from welcom welcoming ceremonies to housing the athletes to uh, advertisements for the Olympics, things like that. Okay, and so yeah, there... Um there are also a lot of French companies who invest into uh, into the organization. Yeah, sure. Are they uh, do they trust their French team? What is the chance that they uh, will win some medals this year? Well, um, when you look at the past, um, for example, in in Tokyo in 2020, well, actually in 2021, because those games were postponed due to COVID, um, the the French won 10 gold medals. Um, and when you compare those to, to 1923, they won 13 gold medals. And for the silver ones, it's the same. Um, in 1923, they won 15 silver medals. In 2020, they won 12. So they won less medals in 2020. But you need to keep in mind, um, the games have gotten a lot bigger, uh, much more participants, and the sports have not gotten easier. OK. Thanks, Bastian, for your explanation. When you think about the Olympics, you immediately think about athletes, but actually the real heroes never come into the spotlights. Our reporter Janina went to the Stade de France and saw it with her own eyes. The Stade de France exists since 1998, as it was built for the FIFA World Cup. Today, it's not only used for sport events like football and athletics, but also the host of concerts or musicals, for which up to 97,000 people fill the stadium. But who is working behind the scenes of the Stade de France, making all of this possible? For any days, at least we have some firefighters, some security agents, 
some um, cleaning team, mm -hmm. and most of the time the guides. And during the events, there are plenty more people. For everyone's safety, the bags get checked three to four times before an event. For emergencies, there's hospitality personnel and a fire department with 80 volunteering firefighters. The police has its own office and a prison, arresting people who are too drunk or start a fight during a concert or other event. Thanks to the security people and the many entrances, the Stade de France can be empty after an event within 12 minutes on average. But there are many more jobs, such as the waiter and waitressing staff, the ticket sales staff or people working in the VIP lounge. Uh, the employees of the stadium are uh, 100, but it doesn't count uh, like the security agents, uh, uh, us, the guides. M many workers here, we, we work only when, we, when they need us. Mm -hmm. So each day, the number of people working here, it can be like 10 for uh, mm -hmm. an empty day to, uh, to hundreds or thousands, okay. depending on the day. So let's see how many people are actually needed to make the Olympic Games 2024 possible. The Central Departmental Training Sport and Entertainment Complex is located in the Val d'Oise and will be hosting the American athletes during the Olympic Games of 2024. To welcome the athletes, they are already busy with the preparations because they are not used to such a large organization as this. We uh, usually have uh, 37 people working all day long, all week long, all year long. We are open seven days a week, all year long. When you think about the Olympics, you will immediately think about athletes. However, there are many more people who make everything possible behind the scenes. For regular competition, you can have very different jobs. You can have communication, you can have also cleaning, maintenance for the area, light. Uh, all the service you have to provide during the competition, it depends on the demand we can receive. Because you have competition where you, when, where you host the people, so also you have the fooding and beverage, the hotels, all the aspects uh, that you can require in a different kind of organization. Arnaud Zumaglia, president from CEDEFAS, still has a lot of work to do, because the Olympic organization can be pretty demanding. For Olympics Games it will be very specific because we have only one user, let's say. While here in a daily uh, activity we can have handball, basketball, uh, different customers requiring different things. While Team USA we uh, are able to uh, anticipate a lot, uh, uh, define what we, want, what we want to every space and then provide every service for every people we have here. Jules Vets from Cedefas Val d'Oise for ECPA News. We saw uh, Cedefas and the organization of Stade de France. Looks like they will need a lot of people to work there. Janina, how many people will work at the Olympic Games of 2024? So I think as we both seen um, in both of our experiences um, at the Golf National and the Stade de France, it is not very easy to define, um, but it's definitely going to be a lot. Um, 630 people work at the International Olympic Com Committee Administration in the headquarters in Switzerland, so they prepare everything for the upcoming Olympic Games. But of course there are many more people needed um, in the different places. Um, so. Yeah, to have kind of a guideline, the Winter Olympic Games in 2018 had around 51,100 people um, employed as staff members, volunteers or contractors. Um, in comparison, the Olympic Games um, in Paris will have probably around 150,000 people. Okay, so many people indeed. And for what kind of jobs do they need these people? Okay, generally many different jobs are needed um, and also not only during the Olympic Games themselves but also and especially for the preparations. Um, right now many people are needed for things that we might not even think about, construction work for example. So many people have to um, prepare and develop the roads, um, three more bridges will be built in Paris and the sports sites just need additional and more sustainable buildings that also have to be built until 2024. Um, yeah, and actually one out of these three bridges that will be built um, will connect the Stade de France with the Olympic Aquatic Centre. Um, 
So yeah, that has to be done. Many people are needed for that. But of course, also many people are needed for organization and administration. So you will see that uh, by 2024, the focus will be less on construction workers, um, but way more on the tourism or organization sector. Um, yeah, specific jobs defined by the IOC uh, will be in the fields of, for example, transport, security, business management, communication or hospitality. So really there is something for everyone. Something for everyone indeed. And so what are the, the benefits for of hosting um, the Olympic Games uh, regar uh, regarding to the employments, etc.? Yeah, so as I said already, um, Paris will get improvements in terms of infrastructure, which is not only good for the construction workers who have a job, um, but also for Paris itself. Um, and also the Olympic Games will offer many opportunities in the tourism sector, because most of the athletes and their sponsors and other spectators will visit the city up to six months before the event even starts. Um, also, there are many opportunities in terms of temporary jobs. Um, while the Ministry of Labour is, yeah, kind of aims to create a sustainable employment on a local and a national level. So they identify currently which professions will be needed uh, in big events after the Olympic Games. Okay, and is it easy to apply for a job as an international or local job seeker? Yeah, actually, it's, it's not that difficult. Um, you can only do it within a few steps. Um, so you okay. have a link on the official website of the Olympic Games in Paris. Um, yeah, and there you can go for an application. You search for the jobs or the fields you're interested in, and then you will get like the full description of the jobs. And you can create an account, you state where you come from, give all your personal details, um, upload your CV and yeah, all the other documents that you might need. Um, yeah, and then you register and you apply. So okay. that's basically So it, it is pretty easy actually to apply. Yeah, actually, it's, it's easy for internationals and for nationals. So and that goes the same for volunteers. If that might be interesting for someone. Um, the Olympic Games always search for volunteers and they can just apply and it's a very diverse and international team. So that's really easy for everyone. Um, yeah, but still upcoming events um, will promote um, um, the, to work at the Olympic Games and they will take place in the region and provide different information to job seeking people in the neighborhoods and the city of Paris. Okay, thank you so much for your view on this topic. You're welcome. A lot of workers also mean a lot of um, preparation and these don't come without any risks. For some sport venues, it's easier to adapt to the events of Olympic Committee, as it is in case of Velodrome, that will hold cycling competition in 2024. Et euh, dès que euh, bah, voilà, la candidature a été euh, officielle, officialisée, que c'était la France qui récupérait le, la, le, la compétition, euh, l'organisation s'est mise en place euh, dans la foulée. Euh, dès l'ouverture de ce site, on avait dans l'ADN le fait qu'on allait recevoir les JO en 2024, même s'il n'y avait plus de certains objectifs. Euh, donc on se prépare au quotidien, euh, les équipes travaillent main dans la main avec le comité d'organisation local. Euh. Even though Velodrome had a lot of time to prepare, it's impossible to avoid all risks. Bah, les risques les plus importants, euh, ils sont, je dirais que c'est toujours les mêmes sur les grosses compétitions. On va avoir euh, toujours des risques d'actes malveillants, euh, donc là sur laquelle la sécurité veille, euh, veille de manière minutieuse pour pas que ça arrive. Euh, après, euh, je dirais qu'on peut avoir des risques de, euh, aujourd'hui, contextes internationaux sanitaires. Euh, on imaginait moins il y a trois ans et maintenant qu'on a connu assez fortement ces dernières années. Donc ça c'est des risques qui peuvent être, qui peuvent être présents, rien n'est impossible. Euh, maintenant aujourd'hui on a des protocoles par rapport à tous ces éléments-là. Donc, euh, donc voilà, après sinon globalement, il n'y a pas d'autres risques parce que tout est anticipé. Et puis même sur les risques les plus importants, tout est anticipé avec des solutions de secours. The Olympic Games are for everyone, also for people with a disability. But how accessible is, for example, the Stade de France? 
Stade de France is the biggest stadium in France with 80,698 seats, from which 1,100 seats are from people with disabilities. But how accessible is the stadium for disabled people, really? The entrance is wheelchair friendly. The elevators are reachable and easy to use in order to be able to get to your seat. Concerning people with a visual disability, the stairs are equipped with warning strips and anti-slip stair nosing. Some lunges don't have adapted toilets, especially for men. We asked the Stade de France staff members if the problem was going to be solved, but they were hesitant to answer. Even though Stade de France is well prepared to welcome disabled people, there is always room for improvement. Golf is a pretty new sport into the Olympics. Uh, Le Golf National in France will be hosting the Olympic Games and therefore they'll need a lot of water. Our reporter Bastien Winter. The National Winter. Golf Course of France will be used as the official golf course. In order to meet the high standards of an Olympic event, the team behind the National Course has to make sure the fields are in perfect condition. 2018, the, the Ryder Cup was also a very high expectation tournament, so everything was already perfect in terms of that 2018. So we just have to keep everything smooth and uh, keep improving for sure, but the course is already, was already perfect in 2018. So we're just... The team behind the national course has to make sure the fields are in perfect condition. 2,000 sprinklers have been placed around the course. Irrigation is the most important part of maintaining a golf course. This is why most of the time and money is being spent on this part of the maintenance. If we don't have enough water, like uh, if there is a big, uh, big drought, it's going to be very difficult for us. If they want us to rebuild some tees, we'll rebuild some tees. If you want to, like, you see all the, the sleepers around the green, the, the, the wooden thing, if they want it to be changed, or it's going to cost a million, what they want to do. Yeah, a huge ecological impact this has on our planet indeed. But for this topic, I would like to give the word to my colleague, Claudia. Thank you, Jules. So today uh, I have the pleasure to speak with Maria and with Michaela, and the girls are going to discuss the uh, environmental aspects during the Olympic Games 2024. Board of the Directors of Summer Olympic Games in Paris 2024 approved the climate strategy with obtains that this event will be the first Olympics and Paralympics Games with positive influence on the environment. Maria, which measure is the Board of Directors taking to decrease the environmental impact? Uh, so, first of all, I found out that the concept of the Paris Committee assumes that 100% of spectators will use public transport uh, during the Olympics. Uh, also, organizers uh, want to use renewable energy sources, not only in sport facilities, but also in infrastructure and catering plan. According to organizing committee, it will be created a special application called a Climate Coach. It will help employees reduce their own carbon footprint. Uh, as for the emission that cannot be avoided, um, the organizers want to balance them throughout uh, activities promoting environmental friendly, friendly policies. Right, but we know that these measures have been criticized. Yes, the measures have been criticized because every year the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, sets measures. Um, they make the so-called Olympic Games Impact Study. And no matter how green the Olympic Games seem to be, the measures are never completely being fulfilled. Do you have any examples? Yes, I have a couple of examples. Um, we have, for example, Tokyo 2021 or Rio 2016. All the measures taken in these countries in order to make the Olympic Games greener, well, they were never completely realized. So can we take the Board of Directors statement as a greenwashing? Mm, well, as Maria said, 
uh, saying that 100% of the spectators will be using public transport. That is really naive. That is not uh, realistic at all. But uh, experts of the Yale University that do research on the impact on the environment of the Olympic Games, they came with some possible solutions. For example, reduce the number of travelers in order to reduce the travel footprint, or select a couple of cities that could host the Olympic Games in order to reuse um, well, no, um, or select a couple of cities that could host the Olympic Games every time in order to reuse the already built or the already existent infrastructure. But of course, mm -hmm. the best solution for the climate would be to not have the Olympic Games at all. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Maria. Will the Olympics have a positive or maybe a negative influence on the environment? For now, we can't say, but we'll come back with a report after the Olympics. Let's go back to Jules now. Really important topic it is. Thank you, Claudia and girls, of course. To air the room a bit um, onto a next topic that is slightly uh, more uh, light. Let's talk about economy. Our reporter Darcis had a look at the marketing limitations of the National Golf Center in France. You will interfere with Le Golf's national marketing team, who is responsible for the golfing section of the 2024 Olympics. The restrictions include a block on the use of the Olympic logo and a constraint on presenting themselves as the venue where the event will take place. International marketing and sales manager of Le Golf National, Laura Leclerc, understands the limitations. It's difficult. I would say it's challenging and it's different from what we knew from the Ryder Cup. I think it's more on that aspect. And I understand um, the French uh, Committee for the Olympic Games. It's more, I think, from a financial perspective. I think you need to pay to be able to use the famous rings because they have got so many international sponsors. I don't know if you can see them. We start seeing them now. Uh, I think they are Bridgestone now. Um, they pay so much that I understand. Furthermore, she shares the plans on how the team will try to put Paris on the map, and this time not for its wine or culture, but for its golfing offer. We do not advertise it, we say it, mm -hmm. but we don't write it down, we don't use the logos to respect um, the wishes from the, um, the French uh, Olympic Committee. So I think it would be after the, during and after the event that we, everyone would have seen Golf National as an Olympic venue and then it would be in people's minds and it would be easier for, for us to remind them that we have been hosting the, the, um, the, the golf event. And if that doesn't work, they always have a backup plan. We hope that if we have a French winner, maybe, why not? Yeah, so apparently they are not allowed to use the logo. Ina, what logo is it about? So now we actually have a new logo, so you can see it behind me. Mm. So this is the logo for the Olympic Games of Paris 2024. And as you can see, it's a combination of three symbols. So we can see the gold medal. We can also see um, the flame, of course, and we can also see Mariam, who is a personification of the French um, Republic. And um, all these symbols combined, they show us a lot of the values of France, but also of um, the Olympic Games. We can also see um, the Art Deco style, which was very famous um, back in 1924, when the Olympic Games were also held in Paris. And this year, it's also the first time in history that um, the logo is being used for both the Paralympics as the Olympics. Okay, and, and what are the symbols, what are they sending for? Because I, I, I think they have meaning, right? Yes, they do. So uh, gold, for example, stands for um, the example that the um, athletes set, so the um, Olympic athletes, because they are the heroes of the games, of course, and uh, they can prove everyone that everyone can be a hero because they constantly push themselves to improve themselves and to um, excel at what they do. Um, we also have the flame, and uh, that represents the unique energy that the uh, games bring with them. And we also have Marianne, like I said, she represents uh, the French Republic, and she also has the same values we find in sports, uh, the Olympics and the Paralympics, which are um, fraternity, humanism, uh, sharing and generosity. Marianne also appears everywhere in French culture, so you can see her in, um, on stamps, for example, or 
uh, outside of city halls. Um, she's also used as an homage to female athletes because, um, and also in auto history, because uh, in 1900, the Olympic Games were also held in Paris, and that was the first year that women were able to participate in Olympic Games. Okay, but the new logo doesn't come without any controversy, I, uh, I heard, but c can you explain about Yes, not everyone is a fan of the new logo because um, when it was first revealed in 2019, people said that it looked a lot like um, like the logo for a hairdresser. So, or some people even said it looked like the logo of Tinder. Um, so people on Twitter were, of course, making fun of it ever since. And um, well, the original Paris logo, um, you can see that it's very colorful, very bright, very different. And it's like a modern representation of um, the Eiffel Tower, which is the most um, famous monument of, of Paris. Uh, so people loved the original logo, but the team decided to change it in what we have now, so with the flame, um, because it brings they want to make it more simple and powerful by bringing all these iconic elements together of friends, uh, the Olympics and sports. Um, so yeah, a lot of people um, really praise the new logo, but not a lot of people are a fan of it. Okay, so it will be this logo that will be used yes, during the Olympic be. Games and not the one of the uh, no. Eiffel Tower. Okay. Um, it's also the first time in history that the Olympics and the Paralympics will use the same logo. Yes, exactly. Why is it only the first time they'll do that? Well, actually, it was a really big deal to the team of Paris 2024. Um, and it was like um, key to them since the beginning of the project. So the Paralympics and Olympics will also have the same venues. And um, the team really want to strengthen the place of sports and um, the daily lives of of the people. So um, whatever your age is or whatever, uh, whether or not you have a disability, you have a place and a role to play in um, the success of Paris of 2024, which is what uh, the president of Paris 2024 said. His name is Tony Estonge. And the team also said that some, uh, that they want to have the same ambitions um, in regards of the legacy for um, both the Olympics and the Paralympics. So sharing the same logo really sends out a very strong message. Okay. Thanks, Ina, for your uh, explanation. You're welcome. Track cycling is finding a way into the heart of many people as it's growing in popularity. We talked to an upcoming talent in the Velodrome in Paris. It is in the dome of the National Velodrome that the Paris Olympic Games will host track cycling. Sloping 44 degrees in places and up to 8 meters high in turns, the track is one of the fastest in the world. Track cycling is still a discipline unknown to the general public. With only 115,000 registered practitioners in France, it is way far from the most popular sport in the country, like football or tennis but athletes rely on the Paris Games to democratize their sport. When I say that I do cyclism, people think directly to the road, the Tour de France, etc. And when I'm on the road, when I'm in the hall, they see what it is. We can see the media and we can see it. We can see it and we can see it. We can see it and we can see it. Robotic track cycling is also one of the objectives of the National Velodrome. It hosts many cycling events every year and has become a true French symbol of the discipline. Inaugurated in 2014, the Velodrome can accommodate up to 6,000 people, enough to make the curious discover a new spectacular sport. I would be terrified to ride on these ramps, uh, if I'm honest. But sports can also be fun. Haha. <laughs> Talking about that. Marisha and uh, Wika, you uh, s looked up some fun facts about the Olympic Games, right? Yes, yes, you're right. And we actually find something very interesting. Um, I would like to know uh, if you heard about the medals, that the gold medals, medals are actually not made of gold. Really? Yeah, they're actually, most of it, like every, every medal is uh, mostly made of the silver. It contain, contains only six grams of gold, so there is very little, as you can... So if you win a gold medal, actually you get 
more like a silver one. Yes, yes, exactly. Like this is, uh, they tell you that this is the gold medal, but this is mostly made of silver. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's great you mentioned a topic about Olympic medals, because uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, sometimes player give up medals themselves um, in favor of, uh, for example, a protest. Uh, as uh, Andrzej Supron did, uh, he gave up his medal uh, of in protest against removal of uh, stocks from uh, the Olympic Games sports list. So I will skip now uh, to the past uh, and I will say something about the ancient uh, Olympic Games. Uh, let's go back in time. <laughs> yeah, let's go back in time. Uh, the athletes uh, in the uh, ancient Olympic Games uh, were competed at the Olympics uh, completely nude. They were completely naked. That was the, like, the rule. Uh, it was actually a rule that they had to yes. be naked. Yeah. Okay, and why was that? Um, because it uh, came from the word uh, gymnasium, which uh, in, Gre in, in Greek language uh, is like the word uh, gymnos. Uh, it means uh, naked. Yeah, and we also have these schools that are called gymnasiums, as you know, and they, uh, that word means the school for the naked. But apparently <laughs> you don't have to go naked to those schools, yeah. uh, luckily. <laughs> right now we don't have this rule, so <laughs> we're so happy. Um, About the past, I don't know if you heard that uh, now we have something like drug suspension. But in the past, we didn't have. The first drug suspension was in 1968 uh, because a Swedish pentathlonist um, drank several beers before his pentathlon and he was uh, so drunk that he got a drug suspension he, um, and he was removed for the, from the Olympic Games. Because okay. he was yeah. that drunk. Because he drank too much beer. Yes, and from that time we have something like drug suspension. Okay, also for other drugs than yes. and alcohol. Yes, 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 for everything. Okay. Um, and also, um, we have something like Olympic rings. And I don't know if you know <laughs> that uh, colors uh, aren't random because uh, every color of the rings. Um, mention five uh, five continents okay. and um, yellow is for Africa, blue is for Oceania, uh, black is from Europe, uh, red is uh, for South and North America and uh, green is for uh, Asia. Okay, so in that way every continent is represented in the Yes, uh, in and the logo. I think that's great. We have uh, all colors for all the continents. Okay, super. That's amazing. I uh, I will stick uh, to the uh, subject of the symbols, uh, but I will uh, say something about the uh, Olympic torch relay. As you can see on the image, uh, we have that uh, symbol of a torch relay, which uh, is not an ancient tradition, as you might assume. It is not. Uh, in fact, the Olympic torch was born out of nationalism in, back in 1963, 63, um, when the Olympics, the Summer Olympics, was uh, in the Berlin. But now the torch, Olympic torch, is a symbol of unity and, of course, life. And did it have something about the, the, the World War then? And because it was about nationality or...? Yeah, it is connected to uh, when you uh, pass the fire uh, between uh, your, the two people. And this is like passing the tradition from generation to another generation. And okay. this is true all the years right now. Okay. That's the tradition. Thank you so much for your uh, fun facts. I really enjoyed. Thank you so much. But what do the people actually think about the Olympics themselves? Let's hear some golf players from Ireland who play golf at Le Golf National. 
Hello, I'm standing at the National Golf near Paris in Guillaumecourt. The Olympic Games are taking place here in 2024 and we are here to ask golf players what they think about it. Uh, nice course, perfect for all the golfers, all right? real mm -hmm. test. So. The fact that we're playing where all the top players have played, um, it's great and it's enjoyable. The course is tough, um, but it'll be great to see where, what, how they'll get on where we're playing. So. Yeah, it's great. It, uh, it's going to be fantastic for the spectators. Obviously, it's a previous Ryder Cup venue, so the, around the greens, it's kind of amphitheaters, which is going to be fantastic for the fans. So if they get a, a full house, they'll have great viewing. The golf competition will take place between the 1st and the 10th August of 2024. Well then, all that remains is to thank you to watch. Uh, I would also like to thank my guests and above all everyone who worked here behind the scenes. Our scripter Ona, floor manager Dersis and of course our editorial manager Hanna and of course many many more people. As I said in the beginning this was uh, a program show made by French, Polish and Belgium students for ESCPA in Paris. I hope to see you next time. Bye.